In chapter four, we're focusing on the preparation step, identifying forces, drawing free body diagrams, all the basic pieces which you're going to use when you solve problems in chapter five because we want you to practice these preparation steps. And this particular problem is part of a whole suite of problems where you're asked to look at the situation and draw a motion diagram, a force identification diagram, and a free body diagram because we need you to practice on these preparation steps. And take this, take this seriously. This will make you better when you get to chapter five. Now let's take a look. We're gonna to prepare to solve this problem without actually solving it. So we're just gonna focus on the prepare step. An elevator suspended by a single cable has just left the 10th floor and is speeding up as it descends towards the ground floor. Okay, so let's look at the crucial pieces. The elevator is suspended by a single cable. Okay, that's going to be an important thing. And it's just left the 10th floor. It's speeding up as it's descending toward the ground floor. So let's start by drawing a motion diagram of this situation. Okay, the elevator is moving downward. But more importantly, when we're considering forces, is this. It's speeding up as it goes. So in each interval of time, it's going to travel a greater and greater distance. The velocity vectors are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that tells us that the acceleration is directed downward. Okay, the acceleration vector is direct, directed vertically downward. That's our motion diagram. Now let's do a force identification diagram. And the force identification diagram is this. I'm going to draw a picture of my elevator. Here we go. And it's suspended by a single cable. Now remember, in a force identification diagram, what we do is this. I'm going to draw a circle around the elevator. We're considering the elevator in isolation of everything else in the universe. And we're just going to consider this. What objects touch it? And there's precisely one thing. There's a, a, an elevator cable. And that cable can exert sp sp exactly one type of force. That's a tension force. Okay? So the cable exerts a tension force. The other force, which is clearly at work, is the long-range force of gravity. So there's one contact force because there's only one thing that touches the elevator. And then there's a weight force, the long-range force of gravity. Those are the only two forces that are at work. So then, when we draw our free body diagram, it's going to look like this. I have two forces. There's a tension force, and that's directed upward. There's a weight force, and that's directed downward. Now, the tension force is directed upward. The weight force is directed downward. I know the acceleration is downward, and so the net force must be directed downward. And so that tells me I want to make the weight force be bigger than the tension force so that the net force can be directed downward. And so that's our free body diagram. So we have a motion diagram, force identification diagram, and a free body diagram. Now let's assess our results and see if this makes sense. If the tension force and the weight force were equal, the net force would be zero, and the elevator wouldn't be speeding up. But it is speeding up at a greater rate. And the way you make this happen is you just reduce the tension. Then the weight force is bigger than the tension. There's a net force downward, and the elevator drops. As a matter of fact, you might have done something like this if you've ever raised or lowered something on a rope. If you want to lower something on a rope, you just release a little bit of the tension, and the object will start accelerating downward. So in fact, this way we've looked at the problem matches our understanding of the way the world works.